Hi, I'm Christine, and I would like to welcome you to the mini series or the mini experiences of Christine. M I N I, not M A N Y, the mini experiences, meaning the small stories that I'm going to share with you in a series of videos. I know that they will be a blessing. They are about numerous stories that uh, and experiences that I have had, supernatural experiences that the Lord has done in my lifetime, and I have witnessed them, and uh, I give all the glory and all the praise and all the thanks to him. So I'm going to share them with you. The first uh, title of this video today is called Visitations. So I'm going to do a couple of visitations. I'm going to tell you uh, before I go into the story just a little bit about the stories. And I am sure that you will enjoy them. And I pray that they will be an inspiration to your life. Thank you so much for joining me. Please, just one moment. I'll be right back. Okay. Again, my first story is going to be called Visitations. Now, I could tell you the stories and I could expound on them more, but I have written them out in a short format and I believe that I've covered pretty much all of the details. If there's something that I miss in each story, I will uh, come back again and uh, clear it up or I will add it. But thank you for joining me again. This is Christine and the mini series or the mini experiences of Christine. The name of my first story or experience is called visitations and i'm going to read it i documented the date i wrote it on september the 13th 2013 at 11 56 a.m very precise my very first visitation began at a time in my life when it was in constant turmoil i was lying in my bed in the middle of the night when I was awakened by a presence. I opened my eyes and to my surprise, there was a man standing in my bedroom doorway at my parents' home. The man was dressed in a beige and shirt and beige pants. And he was an Afro-American. He stood there staring at me. To my own surprise, I rose up on my elbow in the bed and said to him, get out, get out. I shouted again. I said, get out. And the man just still stood there and gazed at me. So I got up from the bed and I headed towards him. And don't ask me what I was thinking. I was moving with an authority that I didn't even know that I had. At the time, I was not saved but I was seeking the Lord. Now let's get back to the story again. As I approached the man, he stepped backwards into the bathroom door that was directly off from my bedroom door. So I headed towards the bathroom, expecting to see him inside the bathroom, but there was no one in the bathroom and I was puzzled. So I returned to my bed and finally I went back to sleep. When I woke the next morning, remembering what had happened that night, at the time I was working at a nearby airport. I traveled to my workplace and started down the airport corridors. As I approached the entrance to my work site, I looked at the boarding line and to my surprise, there was that same man walking with the passengers to board the plane. And I was amazed to say at least, I stood there for a moment thinking, I wonder if anyone can see him the way that I do. The people seem to be unaware of his presence. To this day, I do not know if the man was a person that was dead and did not know it or some other type of supernatural reason. I never felt frightened by the man and only a determination to make him leave my room. The strangest thing was that it was as if I knew him, yet I didn't. And I never saw him again until years later, he tried to come into my house in another country. 
And uh, I, of course, rebuked him in the name of Jesus Christ. And I told him that he couldn't enter in. And he knew he couldn't, but he was trying to see if he could get in. And, and it, it, the Lord is just wonderful. So now do not ask me what I was thinking when I was ordering this, this spirit out at that time. It's, but I was moving with an authority that I didn't know about, that I didn't even know. I wasn't even aware that I even had that power. It was a very strange incident, and that was one of many. And now my second visitation was at a time also when my life was up in an uproar, and I didn't want to live anymore. Have you been there before? I really did not want to live anymore. I was going through so much. I was young and inexperienced with a lot of different things, and um, but... To God be the glory for all the great things he has done. He has given me a desire to live now, and he has given me life, life more abundantly. And for this, I truly and sincerely am grateful at all times to him. So my second visitation was at a, at a time also that I said that, as I just said, where my life was in turmoil and an uproar, and I didn't want to live anymore. And I knew the Lord, and I never considered suicide. I specifically asked the Lord to take me home. And later that evening, I decided that I was going to take a little trip and go and spend a few days with a friend. And my, when my friends left for work and I stayed in the bed, I just suddenly found myself standing at the foot of the bed outside of my body. I watched in amazement, amazement as an, in amazement as an angel came down out of nowhere in the corner of the room. And as I watched her, I first noticed that she was wearing a white wedding gown. She began to float over towards me. I could hear her speaking to me, but I couldn't make out what she was saying. And as she drew closer, I could hear her saying, come, come with an outstretched hand. And her hand was turned towards me and she began to rotate it and move it over so that I could see that she had what appeared to be a five carat diamond or more on her finger. And uh, she just kept repeating as she drew closer to me, come, come, come in a very soft and gentle voice. And as she stood in front of me, she did, she just, She just waited. She waited for a while as she was saying, come, come to see my response. And all of a sudden, all of these things that I remember from the past, all the old sayings, don't go with the dead if they come. And I don't know what I was thinking because she was an angel. But all of a sudden, I began to rebuke her. I began to rebuke in the name of the Lord and say, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I'm not going. I'm not going to myself. I'm just not going. So, um, of course, at some point after saying it, what seemed like for the longest time, I, because I, I was there, I collapsed on the floor when she was telling me to come and I couldn't move a muscle in my body. I couldn't even move. And, uh, so I just kept resisting her and kept resisting her pleading the blood of Jesus. And the next thing I knew, I was back in my body again. Needless to say, the Lord showed me that uh, although I was having a hard time, that uh, I really wasn't ready to go, not just yet. And I must admit that time went on as time went on, and the Lord has done so many wonderful and marvelous things that I am truly grateful that I did not go and that I did stay and I, and, I, and I have this sincere determination to finish my course because the things that the Lord has done down through the years, had I have gone then, then I would have never been able to experience some of the things and to be a blessing in people's lives and to receive my blessings from others if I had gone away sooner. So stick around. You never know what the future may hold. This is Christine. I'm so glad you could join me. Please join me again. This is video number one, the mini series or the mini experiences of Christine, the M-I-N-I -I experiences. 
Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you the next time. Thank you. Have a good evening or good morning or good afternoon.